Mary's daughter, so was her fulfilled. The man is your king. Hermione left a little room anxious to head for the false tower. They needed Dumbledore. This was the only drop of hope in the sea of danger and dangers. Sending a note to London, where Dumbledore was, was the best option they had. Harry, who quickly drank the contents of that little blood bottle, didn't even feel the horrible taste of drinking food. In an instant, he felt weak, as if they were going to evaporate. Oh, the effects are faster and greater than I thought, he said, feeling the stone bubble. When he re refrained consciousness, he found himself at the entrance to a room that was a ah, new. Harry saw a strange silhouette. It moved impatiently. Potter, finally! Professor Quirrell said Harry in a tone of surprise. Oh, yeah, it's me. You did not even suspect, did you? Of course, he did like your father. You don't talk like that about my father. He was a great man and a great fairy. Ha ha ha. How can someone be a good father if he's dead? But Harry, who was looking into Quirrell's eyes, realized that he had not opened his mouth. How can you talk with your mouth shut? asked Harry. Quirrell turned on his back and removed a spoon. At the back of his neck was a horrible face. It was Voldemort who, having no strength and power to have his own body, sized the body of his follower to make that sacrifice. Harry lost all his strength and stuff, staring at that face. It's been a long time, Potter. How are you running back? Harry felt a mixture of emotions in that moment. He felt weak, but very angry. At the same time, he only began for himself that Hermione may appear with Dumbledore. You killed them, remember? said Harry. Oh, good times, said Voldemort with a cold, cruel smile. Master, let's kill him. Hero replied in a tone of enthusiasm and malice in his voice. Oh, no, he will be useful for us today. Suddenly, all of Harry's life flashed before his eyes. He began to have cold sweat and to tremble in fear of what would follow. As you know, started Voldemort, I need a stone more than everyone. That's why I use people to do what I promise. In this case, I use Kirill who was a great slave. Kirill shaked when he heard that sentence. He felt praised, but at the same time, afraid. Everything for you, said. But so far, the efforts have have been in vain, then I can't find the damn stone, and that's where you come in, continued Voldemort. Don't even think I'm going, I'm going to help you, said Harry. You must help, said Voldemort. Harry began to feel strained again, but this time he felt a strange force pulling him to the ground. He tried to push as hard as he could, but could not move. Quick, you roll the spell, shouted Voldemort. As Kirill began to hutter the spell, Harry remembered the advice Dumbledore had given. Love conquers any feeling and conquers even the darkest soul. Harry remembered his parents, the moments he spent with Ron, Hermione and Hagrid, and even Dumbledore. He closed his eyes, hoping the spell would force him to betray his own to ally himself with Voldemort. Faster! shouted Voldemort. I can't! Cedar said Quirrell almost crying. Harry felt like he was in the clouds. A strange feeling made his heart want to jump from his chest. His car was blowing. He rolled on. What? Why? shouted Voldemort. Hero was expressionless. Harry felt a small relief. Harry stopped, stopped feeling the force that pushed him to the ground. Hero looked at the, at the mirror, uh, mirror of invisible and holy whisperer. Why? Why can't I see anything? I'm weak. Harry felt sorry for him, but had no intention of helping, helping him. So, he remained on the floor. Suddenly, Hero clutched his head with immense force. Get out! Get out! he screamed. 
He fell to the ground, trying to pluck Voldemort's face, groaning in pain, Harry watching fright. They felt a crash. It was Dumbledore who just took Harry off the ground. Hero continued his panic attack. Voldemort, even without body, was strong enough to stricken a shield into any part. When Dumbledore was preparing to make Hero stop, he calmed down and remained inanimate on the top. Voldemort said, I'll go back, but with my body. Dumbledore went to check out Hero, who had a deep blow in the place of the heart. Surprisingly, Voldemort's face had left as well. Dumbledore would read a spell in a low tone. Is he dead? asked Harry. Don't worry, let's go. Let's eat anything. We need strength, stand up, said Dumbledore. Harry and Dumbledore went to his desk, where there was a snack. Harry could not stop thinking about everything. He did not touch the food. Why the hell would Voldemort do that? Why had Hero stopped halfway to the spell? Dumbledore was anxious as a child waiting for the Christmas present. Someone knocked on the door. It was Hero. Harry was surprised. He thought Hero was dead. How could he be there? Nothing I say will do any good, said Hero. I'm leaving. I live like a noble. I am you. It is in your minds that I must be. Dumbledore left right after him. Harry was apathetic, alone. Someone knocked on the door again. It was Ron and the one who quickly hugged him. We were so worried, Hermione said. When I arrived, Rod, Ron, F already, uh, already sent a call to Dumbledore. Yes, so you arrived in time, said Harry Potter on, on, on himself. Harry was happy about the presence of his friend, but he was still in shock, so he could not say anything. They understood. Dumbledore came in a few moments later. Hermione, Ron, good to see you. Harry asked a question that wouldn't get out of his head. Professor, why did Kiro stop half halfway through the spell? He could go on, he had nothing to lose. Voldemort has no heart. But Hero has, as I already told you, love conquers any feeling and conquers even the darkest soul. It was the hand of the hero ball. The news went quickly, and it was clear that everyone knew of the tragedy and event in one in thousand reasons for the fact that Professor Hero came to live as an adult. Everyone looked at Harry, but he avoided it. Every year, a house wins the cup and every year the silk slid on his wing. This year, they were weak, and the rabbit was proved to be the best thing. Second, there were Gryffindors. The third, the help of both. And finally, Slytherins, who had a greener look than the color of their team. They all celebrated happily, since, at least, the Slytherins had not won. The year was over. Everyone went to the train. Train station the next day. Harry was strangely full, had passed a good mark with great and heavily great event. The trip to King's Cross station was fantastic. He already missed his friends, even though he was with them at the moment. When they arrived, all the families were with him, including Uncle Vernon, with his unfriendly death. Goodbye to Hall, I hope we'll see each other this summer, said Harry. Come on, said Uncle Vernon. He ignored his uncle. At that moment, Harry was already preparing some friends to scare his uncle and hunt Billy.